I am experimenting with being otherwise ad-free, and I have instead created a Patreon account, which can be found at www.patreon.com forward slash Rob Burgess Show Patreon. Check out the podcast's homepage at www.therobburgessshow.com. Check out my website at www.thisburgess.com. Welcome to the Rob Burgess Show. I'm, of course, your host, Rob Burgess. On this, our 40th episode, our guest is Freeway Rick Ross. I should say at this point, if you haven't heard it yet, go back and listen to episode 25 with guest Mark Levin. This episode will make much more sense if you do. I first interviewed Mark and the subject of his documentary, Freeway Crack in the System, Freeway Rick Ross, last year. The film premiered on Al Jazeera America, and I was lucky enough to screen the film prior to its release. Here's the movie's trailer. You know how they say that everybody has a purpose in life. Well, at one time I felt that selling cocaine was my purpose. We were starving, just looking for a way to, to succeed. The first time I seen rock cocaine was 1980. Murder rate was sky high. South of the 10 freeway was kind of a no man's land. So, you know, we're selling it to the blacks. So you go to these neighborhoods, you, there's no cops, you can sell it where you want, and when they start killing each other, nobody cares. I was going through like a million dollars worth of drugs just about every day. That's like gold. We can make a fortune. He was maybe the biggest guy in LA. Rick, Rick. Freeway Rick. Freeway Rick was getting his dope from a very big operator. I think we're into something that's bigger than us, something we really can't deal with. They had been trafficking on behalf of the United States government. She could prove what she was saying. The story was mind boggling. When I was young, let me tell you how it was when I come from. As I've said before, no drug network will remain alive. There's a lot of people who think that, you know, I made that whole thing up. What they don't realize is that the CIA admitted it. See, I didn't know until I was sitting in prison how valuable an education was. Yeah, drugs suck. Drugs are really bad. But the drug war is worse. You want to know a version of health? Be the only guy playing straight in a dirty card game. And that's what the drug war is. There are more people in prisons and jails today just for drug offenses than were incarcerated for all reasons in 1980. Me being here is defying all the odds. People don't get federal life sentences and beat them. We've been spending billions and billions and billions of dollars every year on this war on drugs to find out that the government was involved. That's pretty astonishing. Crack in the system. This is Los Angeles. Even if the government just turned a blind eye and didn't do anything about it, then you have to start questioning the whole system. I first became aware of the story of Freeway Rick Ross in 2008 when it was revealed that not only was the rapper calling himself Rick Ross, actually named William Roberts, but Roberts had also been a correctional officer in Florida. I then went on to read the late Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Gary Webb's seminal series, Dark Alliance, in which he connected the dots between Ross, who was being supplied with cocaine by Nicaraguans raising money for the Central Intelligence Agency-backed Contras through drug sales. Webb's story was also told in the Jeremy Renner starring dramatic film Kill the Messenger, based on the book of the same name. July 21st, Levin's film, Freeway Crack in the System, was nominated for an Emmy Award in the Outstanding Investigative Journalism Longform category. According to the Oakland Tribune, in the course of his rise, prosecutors estimate that Ross exported several tons of cocaine nationally and made more than $600 million in the process. Counting inflation, it's $1.6 billion, comparing 1986 to 2010. Now he has applied the same passion that helped him build an empire to helping the youth. Ross has been given a second chance to uplift his community by giving back through mentoring and sharing his story. He plans to inspire many of today's youths to achieve their greatest successes without following in his footsteps. Recognized as a pawn in the CIA drug game, Ross was a pioneer in the crack cocaine trade in Los Angeles as well as other parts of the U.S. 
A renowned drug dealer, Ross harvested millions as an unknowing participant of the CIA and Drug Enforcement Agency operatives who provided him with unlimited amounts of cocaine. It was said that his suppliers used the profits to pay for the CIA-spawned Contra War against Nicaragua's leftist government in the 80s. As a youth, Ross moved to south-central Los Angeles with his mother with the intent of playing tennis, which he pursued a scholarship while he attended high school. Unfortunately, his coach would later find out that he was illiterate and removed him from the school. Ross then attended Los Angeles Trade Technical College and again pursued tennis, reaching the third spot on the team. Shortly after, at the age of 19, Ross said a teacher, who taught at a job center, turned him on to cocaine. Because he looked up to him, Ross started selling cocaine for him. The money was good, so he ended up starting his own business. His operation grew, and soon he became one of the biggest cocaine dealers in South Central. During the height of his drug dealing, Ross was said to have made $2 million to $3 million a week. In 1996, he was sentenced to life imprisonment after being convicted of trying to purchase more than 100 kilograms of cocaine from a federal agent. Ross became the subject of a controversy later that year when Webb's Dark Alliance series brought to light a connection between one of Ross's cocaine sources, Danilo Blandone, and the CIA as part of the Iran-Contra scandal. The decision in his case was brought to a federal court of appeals where his sentence was reduced 20 years and then reduced further for being a model inmate. He was then moved to a halfway house in California in the spring of 2009, where he was released on September 29, 2009. And now, on to the show. Hello. Oh, hey, Rick. It's Rob. Hey, Rob. Is uh, are you uh, are you in a place you can talk here? Yeah, yeah, we can we can talk. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, just go ahead and start now. Just let people whatever uh, whatever you want them to know about you here. Just to start off here. Yeah, well, my name is Rick Ross. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. Uh, had dreams and aspirations of being a tennis player. All that was derailed when uh, it was discovered that I couldn't make a life. That's when I turned to the street. Right. And uh, I remember when I talked to Mark uh, Levin, the director of the Crack in the System movie, he said that one of the first things you guys bonded over was uh, was tennis, actually. So uh, I assume you were you were pretty good in your day at, at tennis, right? That was something you're on a professional track for, right? Yeah, that was my first dream and aspiration to be a professional. Right. And then you said because you couldn't uh, couldn't read at the time that that prevented your 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 progress in that uh so what what happened that that led you to uh the the crack uh, situation well once uh, i wouldn't even went to, to, to college and play tennis uh i found myself back in south uh, with all the people that i had grown up with um <laughs> took off pretty quickly. Uh, was it when you were uh, introduced to uh, some of the Nicaraguans that, that that's when it really took off? As, as kind of shown in the movie. Yeah. That yeah. gave me a small advantage. Mm-hmm. You know, all I was ever looking for was an advantage. You know, uh, I learned from tennis. Um, whatever advantage you have, you have to uh, uh, capitalize on it. Uh, that's what happened with the uh, with the robbery. That they gave me a small price advantage and a uh, and a quality advantage. Mm-hmm. And I just took it from there. And, and part of the reason you were getting that that break was because they had. Uh, which you didn't know about at the time, you only found out later that this was involved in the Iran-Contra scandal, um, that this was kind of a, a, a byproduct of that, that, that you were you were mixed up in. So uh, that was, seemed yeah, like it was, uh, it was part of it. Correct. We had a, a tie for, a, you know, ways of getting the drugs over that was uh, uh, better than, than uh, anybody else. Uh, so 
that that was their advantage is that they had uh, connections uh, to the government. Right, and of course your your competitors or whatever didn't have didn't have that. So I'm sure you could be able to sell it for for cheaper than or get it for cheaper anyway than than they could, right? Correct. Right. Um, so you were uh, you were involved in that, and then did, you were making in the '80s millions of dollars a day. I've heard you say. Um, did you have a sense then about whether or not you need to be worried about uh, you know getting caught? I mean, I know you had some pretty advanced technology, from what I understand, to try to police scanners and things like that, right? Well, you know, one of the things is when you grow up in South Central, you know, going to jail is not something that uh, that we really fear. Uh, it's something that's almost expected. Mm-hmm. Almost kind of like a rite of passage. Uh, when when now now when I played tennis, that was a different story because I was around a different uh, mindset. But when I got to South Central, uh, you know, gangs were really starting to flourish. Uh, people were doing things that uh, now to me seems uh, almost crazy. Uh, you know, robbery. Uh, Burglary, car theft. So, uh, with all those things, you know that uh, prison go along with all that. So, uh, going to prison was not something that uh, uh, that we feared. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we almost knew it was coming, mm-hmm. and, and I felt the same way. You know, I, I knew that uh, one day I would be going to prison. Wow. Okay. Uh, did you ever think when you were bringing in that much money, let me just you know get out of here and just buy an island somewhere or something, and just just never look back? Or did you just think you were going to be there until you either died or got caught? I guess. Well, well, you feel you know uh, what, what I tried to do was take my money and buy businesses, mm-hmm. uh, uh, a way to, to to make money to to uh, uh, to get out of the drug business. Uh, that was one of my goals. To find a business, something that, because uh, I could leave, but then my family would have filled up here. Sure. Yeah, that's a so good point. My goal was not only to get me out, but to, to also take my family with me. Mm-hmm. Right. So I was willing to stay until uh, I was in a position to where I could uh, to help my family. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, I heard you say in the movie uh, you didn't really realize how, how destructive crack was at the time you were selling it. Uh, when did that start sinking in that this was you know hurting the community around you here? It didn't seem like maybe at first that was a concern. I guess around around uh, my best years, you know, probably around 85, 86, you know, I started questioning, uh, you know, being in the business. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I, I find myself being a hypocrite, uh, mm-hmm. not wanting people to sell to uh, my people, but uh, then when I looked at it, I was selling to everybody. Mm-hmm. Right. So I started looking at myself kind of hypocritical, and uh, that's when I was able to quit selling. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, now, if you fast forward a little few years to when you were arrested for the last time here in 96, uh, you were facing a, a life sentence because that was your, your third strike, right? That was the, the law at the time. Yeah, that, that's what the government said. Right, oh, that, right, because yeah, yeah, that, that, that'll come up later. Yeah. Um, so when... Uh, yeah, that was point of view. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so uh, what was your mind state? I, yeah, go ahead. I was totally, I was totally entrapped on that case. Uh, I was not selling drugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was minding my own business. Uh, trying to do the right thing uh, when the government uh, sick the Nilo Grande on me mm-hmm. to, uh, uh, to get involved in a drug crime. Uh, I had no money to, to get involved in drugs at that time. Uh, no, I was I, I, I intended. I mean, I, I could have got back in if I wanted to on my own because I knew that I could start selling drugs with a hundred dollars and. You know, and, and build it back up to the empire. You know, mm-hmm. I knew that. So I, I did have the wits to get back in, but I, I didn't have the wits to buy 100 kilos of cocaine uh, like the government set me up to do. Uh, I was rebuilding the old theater that I had bought. Uh, I had a great plan for that, of getting back into the music, of, of getting into the music business, because I had already been in the music business uh, from afar. From afar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my plan was to get back in through this old theater that I had. <clears throat> I felt that with that theater, uh, I could become basically the king of hip hop, uh, uh, 
from that point of view because I knew with the theater, everybody, uh, all the rappers would want to get on that stage. That stage was so, so big and pretty that everybody was going to want to get on there. Uh, <clears throat> but like I said, Danilo Blando on me, and uh, they were uh, high held and get me involved in the drug crime. Uh, eventually, they got me to introduce them to uh, to my friend Chico Brown, and uh, that's when they came in and, and they arrested us. Right, right, and that's a good distinction to make because, of course, that would come up later when you uh, did finally get out because you learned to read in prison and, and actually found uh, that this wasn't properly sentenced and you shouldn't have been charged the way you were. Right? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, <laughs> I found that, that, that in order to be a street striker, uh, you have to commit the crime, you have to go to jail, commit the crime, uh, uh, get out, commit another crime, and get out and go to prison. Well, in my case, that's not what happened. Uh, I got arrested one time, and they took me around the country and uh, prosecuted me in, in multiple states. And um, uh, 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 gave me conviction. Mm-hmm. So that is what's called a continuous criminal spree. A mm-hmm. continuous criminal spree is somebody who is committing crime and hasn't been brought to justice, who doesn't know uh, 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 that what they're doing is wrong. Uh, even, I mean, you can know what you're doing is wrong, but if you haven't been punished for it, mm-hmm. then it's considered that uh, you don't know what you're doing is wrong. So uh, that was my argument, uh, that uh, you can't become a career criminal in one day. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's a good point. Um, so when you were when you were fa- before all that happened, when when you were just uh, sitting there with that, that life sentence when you first got there, what what you know what was your mind state? How did you not give up hope at that point? Well, you know my my first my first few days I was really down on myself, you know, because I promised my kids that that I wasn't gonna get back involved in in drugs and that I was uh I was gonna be there for them. You know, my kids were mm-hmm. were were really good tennis players. Mm-hmm. You know? My son, I had two twins. They were like, ew, when I got out, they were like 10 years old, and they both was ranked in California in tennis. Mm. Um, and, and you know, they played with Venus and Serena, mm. uh, practiced with them. Wow. Uh, I had a nephew that was number one in the 12 and unders in, mm-hmm. the, in the nation. Uh, and I had promised all them that I was going to be there to help them uh, continue their careers. Uh, because they really needed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I found myself back in jail, it was shocking to, to them and, and, and me as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, after a couple months, I was able to pull myself together and, 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 and you know, I just told myself, hey, uh, you Rick Ross, and, and in no situation that you're going to let uh, destroy you. you know, mm-hmm. you're not let this situation break you down, uh, uh, make you something that you're not. So mm-hmm. I pulled myself up and, and uh, you know, I started to read and, and, and just kept reading and reading and reading. I, I was, you, you know, used to read sometimes maybe 18, 19 hours a day. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and I just kept cramming and cramming and my, my reading got better and better. And, uh, you know, one day uh, it just popped out the law books. You know, continuous criminal spree was different than a, a, a three-strike or a career criminal. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, do you uh, do you still keep in contact with the people that you were you were locked up with from that time that that knew you from then? Oh, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, you know, while I was in prison, I started a book club. Uh, I discovered uh, uh, motivational books and business books, and, and I really started to cram uh, uh, those things in. Uh, and and um, and they helped me a lot too, you know, with 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 with, with my law work, with my studying, because uh, 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 I believed if I didn't win my case on the field, I was going to get a, a presidential pardon, mm-hmm. uh, um, and that was before Obama had got in, I believe. But uh, it didn't really matter who was in. Uh, 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 I was going to be so sharp that uh, I couldn't be denied my 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 freedom. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and that that definitely worked out for the for the best because in in two thousand nine, of course, you were you were released. Uh, now, one thing uh, that I think was interesting in when nineteen ninety six, when you went in, the internet was hardly a thing at that point. And then when you got out in two thousand nine, of course, it's kind of 
what we have today. Uh, was that kind of a culture shock to see how much things had changed uh, between those times? It had, but I, I, I did a lot of reading and studying, so I was pretty much up on the Internet. Okay. I don't know if you know, but my story was the first story a major newspaper ever published on the internet right that's right with the dark alliance thing right that was that was how it kind of disseminated to a lot of people uh, a lot more people around the world for sure so yeah so 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 um you know i got some history with the internet Mm -hmm. um a reporter bought me my first domain name uh (laughs) during that time uh i wish i would have kept it (laughs) (laughs) What, what was the domain name I don't remember. <laughs> you know, I, I built up so many relationships during that time uh-huh. that, 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 that that happened. I built up a lot of relationships with writers, reporters. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, because basically, when, when I went to prison with my life sentence, I basically lost all my friends. Mm-hmm. Everybody had stopped talking to me, stopped writing me. Mm-hmm. The only people that, that I had communication with was really my immediate family, my mom, my brothers. Uh, so I kind of like lost communication. So mm-hmm. um, I started building a whole new friend base and, and started off with reporters. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. I, I ran into one a couple of nights ago. Uh, uh, she's doing the Tupac story, mm-hmm. uh, a documentary on Tupac. They're investigating his death, and mm-hmm. uh, they interviewed me for that. And it was one of the reporters that I had met back then, and it was so bizarre, you know. <laughs> Right, it comes full circle. Um, so, uh, so, but now that you're out, you're you're kind of committed to speaking to to young people and and students and things like that. Uh, what what is your message message to them when you do speak to them here? Well, one of the main things that I hope to 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 get across to the young people is that we can do you can do anything, and you can be anybody that you want to be. Uh, we can't get caught up on. Uh, uh, what other people think about us and, and how other people feel about us. I mean, even if you are a slow learner, like I was, um, what I found out that all I had to do was put more energy towards uh, uh, studies, mm-hmm. and uh, it would come to you. So mm-hmm. I try to get young people to understand <laughs> that if they – figure out what it is in life that they want to do and really, really go after it, they'll accomplish their goals. Because if somebody would have saw me in the beginning of my uh, drug dealing, uh, they never would have thought that I was going to become the drug dealer that I became. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't either. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, kind of switching gears a little bit, you've, uh, I'm sure, been paying attention to the presidential election here. Um, what's your take on, you know, drug war reform or prison reform under a, a President Trump here? I'm, I'm not entirely hopeful myself, but... <laughs> well, I don't really know. You know, Trump is all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, he, he seems like, he seems to be, uh, uh, one of the things I can say about him, he seems to put uh, smart people in 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 in, in places. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 so I'm hopeful that he'll continue to to do that. Uh, uh, and I guess that's how he he became uh, as, as famous and, and as wealthy as sure. he is by uh, uh, surrounding himself with with the right people. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I'm hoping that uh, <clears throat> that he'll continue to do that. Um, I'm just going to, you know, just keep being hopeful. But, you know, who the president is doesn't really dictate anything for me. I mean, they're not going to affect my uh, my well-being one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, I was glad that I didn't have to uh, try to get a presidential pardon uh, 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 to get released from prison. But uh, <laughs> yeah. it would have been more uh, uh, of a concern of mine if I would have needed that than, mm-hmm. than this for right, right now for me deciding – you know, how would I make a living or sure. how would my, my life be uh, up under a certain person? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that their decisions are going to trickle down much in, in, in South Central L.A. Yeah, that's, well, that's a good point. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, you have your own book uh, that you've written. Uh, tell us about writing your own memoir. That that had to be a pretty interesting, writing your own story. It was. It was. Uh, I started writing a book when, 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 when I was in prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know that if I would uh, ever be getting out. Uh, so what I did is I wanted to do something so that young people would uh, get an idea of my mindset. Mm-hmm. 
So I started writing this book, you know, and I just started documenting it as far back as I could remember, you know, how I thought, why I thought this, why this was like that, and, 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 and with the intentions that it would uh, 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 benefit, uh, 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 you know, some of our younger generation that, that mm-hmm. hadn't been through the same things that I've been through. You know, say, for instance, if a young kid had decided that he wants to be a drug dealer, well, it's all laid out in the book. He can get a, a blueprint of what his life is going to be like. <laughs> you know, basically, it's going to tell him, you know, okay, you're going to run into this type of person. Uh, they're going to show you how to do this. And this is going to show you how to do that. And then, you know, you may get rich if you do all the right things, but uh, you're going to have to contend with, you know, people trying to rob you, people trying to kidnap you, uh, DEA chasing you down. Uh, and eventually getting caught because, you know, DEA has more money and, and more minds on their side than, than you will have on your side. No matter how big you get in the drug business, you you never be as big as the United States government. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny, you know, when I was uh, sitting in my cell in, in San Diego overlooking the, the harbor, uh, I used to see the aircraft carriers being drug in, and I was, you know, I was thinking that uh, when you're up against the United States government, uh, you're up against uh, uh, that whole that whole fort. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, now, I know that several movies have been made of your story, uh, either directly or indirectly, but um, I did read something where you were kind of striking out on your own maybe to do your own movie. Is that right? I am. I am doing my own movie. I'm, well, you know, right now I'm working on about six TV projects. Oh, wow. I got my hands full. I got a I got a direct link into Lionsgate right now. Uh, person who writes the checks, uh, Reginald Hutton and and Kemp took me up and and uh, asked them if I could have direct access, and they said yeah. Mm-hmm. So I haven't used them, but I'm working on a couple shows right now uh, that they want me to host. Uh, I don't know if I should get the names out. <laughs> me do. Uh, but I'm also working on a movie about my life story. I'm working on a TV series about my life story. Uh, so I have about about four or five projects that I'm working on right now right. That, that I feel uh, uh, excited about. Good. And two of them are, are shows that, that, that they want me to host. Oh, wow. That's great. Um, now, uh, speaking of your life story, I first found out about you when I found out that the rapper named himself Rick Ross is actually a former prison guard who stole your identity, much like the movie CB4. Uh, but uh, that status of that is, is still the same as it was, I assume, and, and that, that kind of nothing more happening with that. Although he did it seem like he wanted to change his name to Ricky Rose in case it all went south, I guess. But, um, yeah, yeah. And that was smart. Uh, of him and Universal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Got to have an exit plan there. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, as far as... Yeah. We don't have any, any, any contact uh, at this time. Uh, uh, and, you know, I moved on. You know, I took a lawsuit, you know, trying to get that done. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, you know, I'm more pushing my, my own personal stuff to book. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do a lot of book tours. Right. Uh, um, I plan on doing like a, a three-month... Uh, a tour where I'm going out and, and just stand out on the road for, for like, you know, three or four months and just, mm-hmm. just grind my book. I want to try to get this book independently. I want to sell 100,000 books, mm-hmm. you know, out the trunk of my car, the way the rappers used to do that. <laughs> right. For sure. Um, now, there is a rapper, though, that uh, is named Freeway that you seem to be okay with. Uh, what did he do that the fake Rick Ross did not do? Well, he, he reached out, and, and, and he was willing to, 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 to help me. Uh-huh. Uh, he was willing to give me a hand. Uh, uh, you know, he showed homage. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff makes a difference. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, also not being a former prison guard and then lying about it also. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, this guy could have really, uh, he could have really made my life easy for me uh-huh. you know, when I got out of prison. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was, he was, he was hot at the time. Uh-huh. I think when I got out of prison, this guy was getting maybe seventy, eighty thousand dollars 80000 a show. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, he could have gave me a job. Sure. You know, uh, uh, he should have offered it even before I got out of prison. Right. And, uh, I believe that it would have made his life uh, a, a lot better as well uh-huh. had he uh, 
had he uh, 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 come and say, you know what, I'm going to give Rick a job, you know, I'm putting him on my tour, I'm going to go with me, you know, come down and talk to my PO. You know, they gave me a PO, I had the PO from hell. <laughs> you know, this guy tried to violate me every chance he got. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, so, so, you know, he could have really, really mm-hmm. assisted me in, in uh, uh, you know, getting back into society and, uh, 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 you know, making a go at it. Mm-hmm. He didn't do that. Uh, for whatever reason. Right. I mean, it's the least he could do for stealing your entire identity. But, um, yeah. Uh, and even down to, like, the, the beard and the uh, the catchphrase, you know, from his song, Every Day I'm Hustling, that was from that was from you, right? That was that was what you yeah. used to say. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, he, he loved me. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> but he, he couldn't admit it to the world. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And he thought, I think that he felt that admitting it to the world would make him uh, 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 smaller, uh, but in actuality, it probably would have made him bigger. Sure. Um, but you seem like there seem like there's a, a fair number of rappers that are that are that are uh, okay with you. Even Snoop Dogg did a the song for the movie, and and you guys seem okay now. Uh, uh, yeah, me and Snoop been okay. He right. Spoke to Snoop when I was in prison. Uh, uh, I was in prison with uh, Snoop's brother-in-law. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I knew his wife when she was young. She used to come and visit his brother, and I watched her grow up uh, from in front of prison as she come to see her brother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she had introduced me to Snoop. Uh, I also knew Shug as well. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm, I'm very familiar with the music business. I've been around the music business for a while. Uh, like I said, uh, one of my goals was to uh, uh, capitalize on the music business in in, in uh in the 90s, early 90s, mm-hmm. uh, but when Danilo caught me up, it, it derailed my uh, my movement. Right. Uh, you know, I knew Dick Griffey uh, from Solar Records, uh, Otis Smith, who, who uh, found Anita Baker. Um, so I, I was very familiar with, with guys that were in the music business that was doing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, I had my hand on the poke, but uh, in the early days, in the 80s, by me being involved with the drugs, I was blinded. And, and couldn't really see uh, where the music business was going. Mm-hmm. But you have your own uh, music group now, right? With with your own artists uh, currently, I do. though, right? Okay, I do. Yeah. So um, I saw something last year where you had been arrested for a little bit in Sonoma County in Northern California. They said you had over a hundred thousand uh, dollars, but then they quickly dropped the charges. Uh, what was that all about? Well, I was going up to uh, Humble County to buy a farm, mm-hmm. so I could start growing marijuana. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to grow marijuana, and uh, I was going up to Humble County. I found a farm, and the guy wanted uh, he wanted three hundred thousand for the farm, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, he wanted a hundred thousand down. And I was taking the money up there to buy that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cops saw me on the freeway. You know, driving down the freeway doing about 70 in a, in a pack of cars, and he just identified me, I guess. He mm-hmm. thought I was a black guy, and he pulled me over. Right. He illegally searched my car, mm. you know, because I had my driver's license, insurance, and everything, so he had no reason to, to even ask me to get out of the car. He if I did something wrong, he should have gave me a ticket. Sure. Uh, but he didn't. Uh, and they never filed charges either. Right. Oh, okay. But they still holding my money. Oh wow! They still have it. <laughs> yeah, they Jeez. have my money, my phones. Uh, kept all my property. Uh, I mean, you know, this is another part of this this bogus drug war that, that they do. You know, mm-hmm. they look at you, you black, and they just take a gamble. You know, maybe he got some, maybe he don't. But if he doesn't, ain't nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. And if he do, I gotta arrest. Mm. Okay. Well, I used to live in uh, Ukiah in Mendocino County, so that's... Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so I know all I like about that. <laughs> yeah, I like it up there. That's a beautiful country. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I, I still want to give me a form up there. I just got to give me some more money. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, now that it's uh, that's recreational is legal, hopefully that'll make it easier to, to maneuver. I don't it know if it will. In. It was It was medically legal. This is, yeah, this is... Yeah, I know there's still, like, uh, federal things that they try to get whatever, but... But yeah. So, but anyway, this was a state guy. This was a state guy that, that state oh, guy. was it? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they should investigate him. I bet he. I bet he legally stops 
hundreds of people a day. <laughs> yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, Violating civil rights. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it sounds like it was a completely bogus case, from what I want to understand here. So. Well, it was. They never, they never filed charges. Uh, had me go to court about four or five times, and you know, nothing ever happened. Mm-hmm. Right, so right. At the end of the day, you know, it's over with. So, we, we don't move on. Right, for sure. Well, um, I don't mean to take up too much of your time here, but we always end up ta- talking about uh, music uh, at the end here. And I know that you, you said you talked about Tupac a little bit, and I know he was just hey, inducted hey, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame I'll here. I'll be there by two minutes. But um, what, what, what music have you been listening to lately here? Oh. Uh, I'm not really listening to music right now. Uh, I'm on my grind right now. I'm trying to, you know, this year I'm planning on making making me a couple million dollars this year. Okay. Uh, so I'm really focused right now. I don't want anything to to sidetrack me. You know, I try not to be sidetracked. I don't watch TV. I don't watch sports games. Mm. Uh, I don't have any fan. I'm not a fan of anybody. Wow. Uh, right now I'm just into myself. I'm in the zone. And you know I don't want to be disturbed. Wow. Okay. Good for you. That's <laughs> that's that's better than I can do. That's just great. Um, well, but you know, that's how I did it in the drug business. I went into I went into a zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I went into a, a house, locked myself in, and I only came out to re up mm-hmm. and, and to uh, 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 eat. Other than that, I stayed in that house. Just focused the whole time. <laughs> Right. No TV, no radio. So when people are like, did you see? No, I didn't see. <laughs> yeah, they ask, no, you know such and such actor. you got to know him. <laughs> How do I have to know him? Why is he important to me? Is he making any money for me? Or <laughs> he don't know me. You know, why would I root for a guy that, you know, if I was on fire, he wouldn't even, you know, <laughs> throw a bucket of water on me, You know, like... For what? You right. Know, why would I clap for him? He's not going to come and clap for me. Sure. You know, I'm 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 really uh, hyped on you know, not you know, and and it may sound in, insensitive, but you know, I don't care about people who don't care about me. Well, yeah, that makes sense. But um, you know, if you support me, I support you. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely. Well, I, I certainly appreciate what what you're doing, and uh, if you ever want to come back and, and talk about any projects or anything you got coming on, you're you're always welcome here. So. Okay. But um. So hopefully, hopefully, we got to get interview in. And, yeah. Oh yeah, my website. They can go to my website and get my book and my T-shirt. It's freewayrickyross.com. Absolutely. Well, I was just about to ask you that. So, uh, well, uh, take care, man, and have a good day here. Hi, thank you. Talk to you soon.